Whenever an object is moving, it has kinetic energy. When this movement stops, this energy is converted. In case of a collision, this energy causes a big collision force. When a moving object is breaking or colliding, energy is converted from kinetic energy to impact energy. In other words, the kinetic energy the object had before breaking is equal to the impact energy which is released during breaking. When, for example, a car has a high speed, so it has a lot of kinetic energy, it will result in a big braking distance, or in case of a collision, when there is no time to break, it will result in a big collision force. So both distance and force play a role in determining the impact energy. The impact energy is in fact the product of the distance and the force. Let's compare the situation of braking with the situation of colliding. In case of braking, the force is caused by the brakes and controlled by the driver. But in case of a collision, the force is an uncontrolled impact force. The braking distance is the distance travelled while braking. But in case of a collision, the braking distance is equal to the deformation of the car. Question. How much energy is converted when a car collides against a concrete wall? A. Half the amount of kinetic energy the car had before colliding. B. The total amount of kinetic energy. Or C. No kinetic energy is converted. Did you choose B? Well done! Let us take a closer look at the formula of impact energy. How are the braking distance and force related? To find out we need to imagine that the impact energy is a constant number. Then, when the distance is doubled, the force has to be half as much to find the same number for the impact energy. When the distance is tripled, the force has to be divided by 3 to find the same number, and so on. This proves that the distance and force are inversely proportional. Now let us take a look at the kinetic energy. This energy is related to the mass and velocity of the moving object. The kinetic energy is in fact half times mass times velocity squared. This means that a moving car with more mass has more kinetic energy. And likewise, if the car has a higher speed, then there is also more kinetic energy. More accurately, you could say that the amount of kinetic energy is directly proportional with mass and directly proportional with the squared velocity. When an object has speed, it has kinetic energy. When an object has to break or is in a collision, kinetic energy is converted into impact energy. When this kinetic energy is converted into impact energy, the two equations can be combined. You get half times mass times velocity squared equals the distance times force. This equation shows that the force during braking or during a collision is inversely proportional to the braking distance, directly proportional to the mass and directly proportional to the velocity squared. So, the force is inversely proportional with the distance. Imagine that the mass and the velocity do not change. 
then when you double the distance the force becomes half as much when the distance is tripled the force has to be divided by three and so on the force is directly proportional with the mass imagine that the velocity and the distance do not change then when you double the mass the force becomes twice as much and when mass is tripled the force will be tripled too and so on the force is directly proportional with the velocity squared imagine that the mass and the distance do not change then when you double the velocity the change of velocity squared is times 4 so the force will become 4 times as much too when the velocity is tripled the force will be 9 times bigger and so on now let's see if this is clear to you I have a question for you write down the details so that it is easier for you to answer the question two identical cars with the same mass are driving at steady speed car A has a velocity of 60 km an hour and car B has a velocity of 120 km an hour both cars collide against a concrete wall the driver of car A has to endure an impact force of 1500 newtons first let me ask how is the impact force related to the velocity exactly the braking force is directly proportional with the velocity squared now what is the impact force on the driver of car B Yes, indeed, car B has a velocity which is two times bigger, so the impact force on the driver of car B is four times bigger. In fact, the impact force is 6,000 newtons. Now you are able to explain the physics of a collision at high speed, and you are able to calculate the braking or collision force. Thanks for watching.